Hey, so it turns out there's more than just one kind of intermittent fasting. There's actually three. I'm going to break them down in this video so that you know which one might be best for you. Now, full disclaimer, I'm not going to go into exquisite detail with each kind of fasting method, but I am going to give you the benefits, the cons, and what the practical applications are for each. And then I have a plethora of videos on my channel that you can dive into if you need more specifics on exactly what to break a fast with, et cetera, et cetera. The point of this video is to outline what I think are the three primary kinds of intermittent fasting that you can do. By the way, there's a lot more that you can do than just these three if you want to mix and match a bunch of variations, but these by far are the three pinnacles. Hey, I want to make sure you hit that red subscribe button and then hit that little bell icon so you can turn on notifications and know whenever I go live. Also, after this video is over, please check out Thrive Market. So if you're doing keto or you're doing fasting, you're going to want to check out Thrive's keto and fasting boxes. Now, these are boxes that I've put together. So Thrive Market is an online grocery store. So it makes it so that you can get your groceries online delivered right to your doorstep. So you don't have to go to Target, you don't have to go to Sprouts, you don't have to go to the grocery store at all. You can just get your stuff there. So I've been fortunate enough to have the opportunity to create specific boxes and bundles that you guys can utilize and get at a special discount after you watch this video. So down below in the description. All right, let's go ahead and dive right in. So the first one that I need to talk about is the big obvious one, and that is combining intermittent fasting with the ketogenic diet. Now, I call this keto fasting, and it deserves its own little world, simply because it is unique in its very own sense. Intermittent fasting and keto are not one in the same. Like, you don't have to do keto to do intermittent fasting, and you don't have to do intermittent fasting if you want to do keto. However, it's important to know that both fasting and keto are born from each other. The benefit of intermittent fasting in the first place is simply because you're going without food to the point where your body creates ketones. So whether you're in ketosis or not, the benefits that you're getting from intermittent fasting are because of ketones being present. So now that we can put away the weapons and we can not fight each other on that, let's go ahead and talk about what happens with keto and fasting. Okay, so this particular method is going to be where you're fasting, but when you do break your fast, you're not having carbs, you're keeping it strict keto, okay? So you fast and then you eat keto. You fast and then you eat keto. This is really, really good for fat loss. Probably the number one thing, the number one kind of fasting for fat loss, okay? It's also extremely, extremely good for mitochondrial health. It's just for overall energy metabolism, getting your body to manufacture energy better. But probably even second to fat loss is gonna be cognitive function. Very, very big for boosting cognition, okay? So it's gonna help you out with thinking more clearly, thinking just a lot cleaner when it comes down to just everyday life. Okay, so here's how it looks. When you're fasting, you're draining your liver glycogen. You have stored carbohydrates that are in your liver, okay? So once those carbohydrates are burned up, which usually happens after about one day of fasting, you're in ketosis. Okay, so if you're looking at the traditional forms of intermittent fasting, which are gonna be like 16 hours of fasting, eight hours of eating, or possibly 18 hours of fasting, six hours of eating, or even all the way up to 20 hours of fasting and four hours of eating, okay, you're going to have some degree of ketones being present because your body has drained glycogen out of the liver. So that's the goal with fasting. Drain the liver glycogen so that the body starts to produce ketones, okay? Now, fasting alone depletes glycogen. Okay, so at the end of your fast, you're likely in ketosis. But then, when you eat food, if you're consuming carbohydrates, that's kicking you out of keto. So the benefits of the fast are abruptly stopped. Okay, you're fasting, benefits are great, benefits are great, then you have carbs, boom, benefits stop. There's other benefits, but the benefits of ketosis stop. However, if at the end of your fast, you stay keto, then you're sort of extending the fast, but without actually fasting. Okay, so you've gone the full day or 16 hours or 18 hours or 20 hours, and then you break your fast and you still keep eating keto. But because you're not replenishing that liver glycogen, your body still stays in a fasted state. So it's like you get the benefit of fasting without having to starve yourself. And that's exactly how the medical community found ketosis for epileptic patients in the first place. It's sort of like learning a language, right? So like if you go on a fast and you don't eat, your body gets a little bit fat adapted. It gets used to using ketones and fat. But then you eat carbs and you jolt it out of it. So it's like learning a language because you go to another country, you start to learn the language, and then you move back and you forget it. Then you go to the other country and you learn a little bit more and then you come back and you forget it again. But if you just immerse yourself in that country, then you learn the language a lot faster. So that's why I usually recommend keto plus fasting just works really well. So then in that case, what do you break your fast with? What should you do? Well, when you break your fast, 
you want to be consuming the kinds of fats or lean proteins, and lean proteins, I should say, that are going to allow you to create the most amount of ketones. And this warrants a reference from a pretty interesting study. So this study was published in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism. It took a look at 20 adults. Okay, these adults were all doing a ketogenic diet, and it broke them up into two groups. One group consumed 60% of their fat calories from saturated fat, 15% from polyunsaturated fat, and 25% from monounsaturated fat. Then another group did 60% of their calories from polyunsaturated, 15% from saturated, and still 25% from monounsaturated. So all they did is they flip-flopped. One group had more saturated fat, one group had more polyunsaturated fats. Well, what they found at the end of the study was the group that had more of the polyunsaturated fats. So when the benefit of keto plus fasting is ultimately coming from a massive amount of ketones being produced, then we're gonna to wanna to have fats that are quicker and easier to break down. So the polyunsaturated fats, okay? So we're gonna just go for the healthy oils when we break a fast, and then later on introduce the saturated fats. We wanna prolong the life of the fast as long as we can. The other thing that's really cool is the ketogenic diet has a unique way of preserving thyroid health. So what that means is that when you're losing weight, your thyroid would typically start to produce less. You slow down your metabolism because you're losing weight. But the ketogenic diet is unique in that it actually makes it so you're more sensitive to the thyroid that is floating around, meaning you have less actual slowdown of your metabolism when you combine keto with fasting. Whereas if you combine carbs with fasting, you could slow down your metabolism, which goes ahead and allows me to lead in to the second kind of intermittent fasting, which is exactly what I've been talking about. Fasting with carbs, okay? So in this particular case, you're still fasting for 16 hours and eating for eight, or fasting for 18, six, or 20 and four. The difference is you're not someone that necessarily wants to eat keto. Maybe you want your carbs, but you find that you just prefer an intermittent fasting lifestyle. Well, that's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I could poke holes in everything if I wanted to. The benefit of carb fasting comes from fat loss, of course, but also you get a chance to build a little bit more muscle simply because you have the advantage of manipulating insulin spikes. Granted, I will say, full disclaimer, you're not going to lose as much fat on carb fasting as you would with keto fasting, and you're definitely not going to have as much of a cognitive effect, but you do still get some of the ketone effect during the period that you're fasting. But it's like you get a very small amount of keto and the rest not, okay? So you're basically, you're jumping in and out of ketosis all the time, which again is okay. Intermittent fasting with carbs is great. I cycle in and out too. Sometimes I do keto fasting, sometimes I do carb fasting. So one is not necessarily better than the other, it just all depends on what you're after. So the hard part with carb fasting is, like I mentioned before, is you don't get fat adapted very well. Just as soon as your body is starting to get adapted to utilizing those fats, then all of a sudden you're pull them out of the equation, you're putting carbs back in, okay? So you're getting quick benefits of keto, but not prolonged benefits of keto. Again, remember, we're getting the benefits of keto when we fast, whether we eat carbs or not. Now, the benefits that are really strong come from your insulin sensitivity. So basically, while you're fasting, you're bringing your insulin sensitivity way up and insulin resistance down. So that means when you do break your fast, if you consume some carbohydrates, it's gonna spike your insulin really high, which at first sounds bad, but if you're trying to build muscle, this could be a good thing. So that means like when you break your fast, you break your fast with some protein that's very lean, and you break your fast with some carbohydrates that are relatively high glycemic, like some protein and maybe some rice cakes or something like that, that'll spike your insulin really high. What that does is insulin comes to the cell and knocks on the door and allows it to open up so that nutrients can come in. Now, when we're on keto, we don't have a lot of insulin being elevated. So it's hard to absorb a whole lot in the way of protein, but our body preserves it. That's a different story. Now with carb fasting, when we break our fast, we end up having a big surge of insulin that greatly opens the door to the cell so a bunch of protein can get in. So it works really well if you're trying to put on some muscle and you're not as concerned with fat loss. But there's some very important things that you need to know. Do not combine fats with carbs. When you are doing intermittent fasting with carbs, it is very important that you stay ultra strict. With keto, you have more flexibility because you're within the confines of the keto spectrum anyway. But with carbs in the equation, you have some serious volatility. Remember, carbs turn on some pretty nasty switches in your body. And if you can control them and you can have responsibility, it works great. But when you combine fats and carbs, it's when you have the problem. So if you're fasting throughout the day and then you just go and you sit down and you have dinner, which is just a normal standard American dinner with fats and carbs combined, you're in for a world of hurt, okay? What happens is you spike your insulin with the carbs, but then not only is the protein gonna come into the cell, so is the fat you just ate. 
you just activated storage hormones in conjunction with fat consumption. So now the fat's going to go to storage. Okay? There's also something we need to know of that's called acylation stimulating protein, ASP. Okay? ASP actually gets spiked from fat. And then what happens is the ASP goes and spikes insulin. So believe it or not, when you consume fat along with carbs, you get a bigger insulin spike a lot of times than you would if you just had carbs. Now, full disclaimer again, some fats will slow down the digestion of carbs and make it better. But if it's high glycemic carbs, then you run into a big problem. Anyway, I'm getting complex here. The point is, when you break your fast, keep it lean. Keep fats out of the equation. Get your carbs, get your protein, and eat your fats later, because you still need fats, okay? Now, more on that in other videos. The third kind of intermittent fasting is called OMAD, or one meal a day. And I'm sure a lot of you watching this video have heard of it, or maybe you're trying it, or maybe you've been doing it for a while. It has its benefits, but it also has serious drawbacks. The benefits of OMAD is the fact that you're fasting for 23 to 24 hours out of the day and then consolidating all your food into one meal. Huge benefits from the fasting side of things. You're definitely getting into ketosis with that fast. You're draining your liver glycogen and you're getting huge cognitive effects on your brain, okay, because you're actually having the effect of the ketones hitting your brain. But if you break your fast, then you're having to consume so much in one sitting, it can be tough for some people. Some people do really well, but the biggest issue that is out there is that a lot of times people aren't eating enough and they're making it so that the calories they are consuming are not nutrient dense because they're simply trying to get their calories. So therefore, you end up with a slowdown in your metabolism because you're slowly eating less and less and less and less. Now, this can be very, very detrimental to your thyroid activity and affect your metabolism in a negative way. So if you do OMAD, it is critical that you still try to kind of break it down into two smaller meals within one meal, okay? So it's like break your fast however you would normally break your fast with carbs or with fats, and then 15 minutes later, then eat a little bit more flexible, okay? You still need to kind of break it into two. I'm a much bigger fan of two meals a day than one meal a day. And a lot of it comes down to the fact that if you are not doing keto, how are you getting your fats and your carbs in without eating them at the same time? You have to eat them at the same time, which means that you can cause some serious havoc on your body. Now, there's one really important study that we need to reference. And this study was published in the journal Cell, and it puts some things in interesting lights, okay? Here's what happens. When you consume a bunch of food all at once, it triggers the body to go into a specific kind of shock in some ways. We have this thing called RNR-dependent protein kinase, also known as PKR. PKR normally goes out and attacks viruses, okay? It normally fights bad things coming in. But when we consume too much food in one sitting, like we would potentially with OMAD, what can happen is it triggers this PKR to ultimately become activated. The extra nutrients that are coming in bombard our cells, and there's so much activity happening at one time that it activates that PKR, and that PKR shuts down our metabolism as an immune response. Yes, it's called metaflammation, and it's a legit thing. Too much food, too much nutrients at one time sends the body into shock in that particular area, triggering a massive round of inflammation, which makes it so you can store a lot more fat. Inflammation is bad and defeats the purpose of everything that we're doing. So the question that we have to ask ourselves is, how do you get around this? If you're doing OMAD, the only way to get around the metaflammation situation, <laughs> that's kind of funny, the metaflammation situation is to actually eat less and not bombard your body. But if you eat less, then you're breaking the cardinal rule of OMAD, which is to make sure that you're still getting enough calories. So that's where you run into the issue. That being said, you can get tremendous, tremendous, tremendous fat loss. So one meal a day is something that is good to utilize for short-term situations, okay? So if you've been doing intermittent fasting for a while, inject some OMAD lifestyle into your life for a little bit and then come back. Okay, I am not anti-OMAD, that's why it's on this list so that you can use it as a tool, but you have to balance it out with other things. OMAD with keto is better than OMAD with carbs. Anyhow, so much information here. The bottom line is the ketones are our friend. That is what we are looking for. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you in the next video.